all right, if there is one knife that exists for bushcrafting especially that you have no excuse not to own, it has to be the Mora 511. This little guy is honestly pretty small, a little bit smaller than I was initially expecting. I think it's kind of funny, you know, when you look at things online, especially after I'm used to the Mora Clipper, the Mora Companion, the Mora, um, what is it, like HD Companion or Heavy Duty Companion, the Robust um, from Mora. I'm definitely used to the like wider and a little bit longer, about like half inch longer Mora. Um, like those blades are all about a half inch longer than this little guy. But the 511 is actually a pretty cool knife. And I think one of, of course, the coolest things about it is that it has a unbeatable price point like this is a like in most cases sub $15 knife and in this day and age it's honestly hard to find knives that you know perform well have good materials for under $15 like that's really basically nothing and so that's why like the title of this video is like you have no reason to not own this knife even if you know like your budget is you can't really support it if you are like can't really support expensive knives if you are going to the woods to practice bushcrafting like this is honestly probably the knife that you should choose because it's made out of carbon it says just carbon steel on here but it's c100 which is 1095 and even finding well heat treated 1095 for under 15 dollars is a blessing in and of itself now to be fair i will say mora has had to cut quite a lot of corners to make this knife as um, cheap as it is so you do have a totally unfinished blade stock and also you have a pretty thin blade stock overall now in my opinion when it comes down to it i've talked about in quite a few videos um, you, i'm not really opposed to having super thin blade stock i think a lot of people sit there and think like oh if a knife you like the the hallmarks of a durable knife are you know things like a quarter inch thick full tang ex exposed full tang and stuff like that and realistically speaking you know in most actual applications applications of using a knife in bushcrafting and survival tasks, you know, chopping through wood and you put tawning through wood, feather sticking stuff does not require the most insanely robust or overbuilt knife. And sure, there are a good number of knives that would fail and break in those types of tests and activities. Um, but overall, like, you don't necessarily need the world's strongest knife to have a decent bushcrafting knife. A lot of the applications are not as insane as some people may think. So the 511 is definitely not the most durable knife out there, but it's also really not that fragile either. Once again, this does feature more as kind of classic three quarter tang. So the tang ends, you know, like somewhere around here. So it's not an absolute full tang, but would be what we consider like a near full tang. In my opinion, if most of your fingers cross the tang, then it's going to be a reasonably durable knife. And once again, that's not like a hard and fast rule. There can be machining defects that cause blades to break and stuff like that. But overall, the 511 does offer a lot of durability for what this is. In addition to this knife is just barely bigger than my palm, as you guys can see there. So it's not like you're gonna be spanning like a five inch tree with this, or, you know, like felling some massive, you know, redwood tree with it. Like this is a tiny knife within reason. It's not super tiny, but you know, it's a pretty small knife. You're not gonna be doing anything huge with this knife. So it also kind of reasonably limits its tasks. Now, some of the other things that I think make this knife really solid, especially for its price point, you do have a really nice finger choil on this. And for me, I don't entirely hate this, especially on Mora's, because with Mora classically, the blade starts quite literally where the actual knife ends. So the, the very cutting edge is right at the end or the terminus of the handle. And so having a nice kind of steep guard there does help. Now for me, I, at least if I can take it or leave it, I've never been huge uh, into needing finger guards or finger choils or anything like that. Like I can stay safe being close to blades, but I do appreciate, especially for this is primarily aimed at people either in trades and services, that's why it's called a craft line, but also to like beginning bushcrafters, people who would more than likely be the ones spending, you know, $11 on something like this knife here. And so because of that kind of like beginner orientation uh, or like how this knife is oriented towards beginners, it is nice to have a kind of positive finger guard there so that you're not actually gonna accidentally slip up on your cutting edge. 
Aside from that, I would say the biggest thing that I dislike about this knife, and honestly, like, it's hard to complain about a knife this cheap because realistically, there's just so much value in this little package. Um, but realistically, I would say that the only thing I dislike and why I typically recommend the Clipper, though if you're on an extreme budget, the 511, it's still cheaper. So, you know, if you really need it, go for the 511. But I will say the thing that I do like about the Clipper over the 511, outside of the longer blade length naturally, is of course the rubberized handle. So the rubberized handle honestly genuinely gives you worlds of traction more than just the straight plastic will. However, the nice thing about the plastic, similar to the rubber, is that it's going to be a reasonably climate neutral um, or temperature neutral handle. So if you're in a cold climate, cold season, winter, whatever, this is going to stay reasonably temperature neutral so it's not going to be ice cold when you pick it up unlike those you know heavily touted um you know full tang survival knives so you can take that one as a one-up over the burly you know like strong um, survival knives that everyone touts up or even bushcrafting knives um, that everyone touts up now, personally, if I was running this um, more frequently, what I would do with this is one of two things. Either I put these in my pocket, in the knife pocket on Falkneven um, Vita Pros or a handful of other different uh, Swedish styled um, trousers or pants, whatever you'd like to call them. Um, that is a way that I typically carry this, but also I wouldn't be opposed to running this as a neck knife, especially given its size and reasonable compactness. I think running this as a neck knife is another very solid option. So that is kind of my overview and thoughts on the Mora 511 um, craft line. This is just a crazy cheap knife that I think like anyone should have in their um, bushcrafting kind of setup, especially for someone like myself, where occasionally, you know, not super often, but occasionally I do take people to the field, teach them survival and bushcrafting skills. It's nice to have these types of knives, the 511s, the clippers, the companions. Um, these knives are really nice to have because I can teach a lot of basic and even, um, you know, more advanced survival skills with one of these knives and not have to have someone run around with my, you know, like $300 um, Bark River Knives Cub or my, you know, like $300 GSO um, 5.1, which once again, not opposed to sharing those knives, you know, with people who are more experienced, but it's nice that I can take someone who has no survival skills, just hand them this knife, teach them the basics, show them the ropes, and, you know, if they damage it, it's an $11 knife as opposed to a $280 or $300 knife that's super hard to get. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. As always, God bless, and I'm out.